Welcome back to an emergency meeting of the minds. I fucked up and uh, didn't check the audio on our second two episodes on Friday. So they're trash. Um, no one was very happy about that because that means that we are here today on Monday morning to re-record or record something new entirely. These episodes might make it up to some other platform sometime. We're just not going to put it on the main channel because we can't afford to lose subscribers. <laughs> Um, welcome. This is my beautiful wife, Nona. If you're joining the show for the first time, you can find her at nonaphelps.com. That's N-O-N-A-P-H-E-L-P-S.com. Get some insurance. He's Wrong, She's Right is presented by Nona Phelps, Social Shield Insurance Agent. Check her out. He's Wrong, She's Right is also presented by America's Technology Center of Excellence, Lee Max Media, leemaxmedia.com. Those links are in the description. We would love for you to just click all the links in the description and see where they all go. You might get Rickrolled. You never know. You're just on a roll this morning, aren't I you? Am. I am. All right. So. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. So, some stuff happened this weekend. Yeah. Um, Please enlighten us, Andrew. We, you and I, and I, did I, did we talk about it on the show about how Mike had just blocked me like a week ago? Mm -mm, no. So years ago, as you know, mm -hmm. um, I was the marketing account manager for Fieldcraft Survival for their marketing agency. And I never really dealt with Mike. I dealt with his marketing team that they had in house. Great people. Awesome people. Um, Mike was on maybe one call every other month versus the weekly calls that we had. But he always had a billion different projects going on. Anyways, long story short, the 26th, I think it was, he made a post about the Speaker of the House and how politics are just a big circle jerk, self-licking ice cream cone, as he described it. And I was like, and? Oh, wow. Okay. I mean, it's true. He's not wrong. but. Mm -hmm. Like, and, you know, are you presenting a solution or are you just telling us what we already know? And he blocked me. So that was on April 26th. Mm -hmm. Fast forward four days, th five days. May 1st was five days from, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, he's arrested for domestic assault. Four felony charges, two misdemeanor charges, including charges um, of bodily harm they have like the they have like felony levels like f2 f3 i don't know exactly and i'm sure in utah it's different than north carolina um but he had two felony twos two felony threes two misdemeanors it looked like it either said mb or m8 i don't know it's kind of hard to read the the uh police report that i saw on twitter and then again saw on reddit um the unredacted versions on reddit with like actually addresses and names and stuff. Oh, wow. The one floating around Twitter, the person that had shared it and is following the story, um, did his best to redact some of the other names or some of the PII. That way it wasn't just spreading around Twitter, but it's already out there now. Gotcha. It's already in search. Somebody already has a copy of it. It's too late. Plus you can FOIA request it. Anybody that wants that information can get it no matter what. So anyways, um, we were just talking about, and I think the actual episode where we talked about the story about uh, whether you, whether you would like to be in the woods with a random stranger or encounter a random stranger or a bear. And you said that you would take your chances with the random stranger. Kind of seems fitting that this happened at the same time because Mike Glover is well known for being a self-defense class teacher. That's one of you know the core products that Fieldcraft Survival sells are you know survival training. Um, you know, off-grid living, farming, all that kind of stuff. Self-defense, specifically self-defense for women, children, et cetera. Uh, of course, there's also for men, but their target demographic, they know overwhelmingly, men are too proud to go through something like that for the most part. Like if a guy is worried, he's not going to go and pay for a class. And maybe some of the older generation, maybe some of these other people, I don't know, but it wasn't something that we even like tried to market to men because it just, you know, you call it something else. You call it uh, alpha camp. 
Interesting. So. Men um, are too proud. Is no, that what no. You're getting at? I'm saying just in general, like, you know, like if men are going to tell you that they're going to self-defense training, they're going to tell you they're going to jujitsu or they're hitting a the gym. They're doing their elements. They're going to the Understood. range. Yeah. Got it. Okay. But they're not going to go and enroll in men's self-defense. I don't think so. Maybe I'm wrong. Haven't looked at the statistics, but the target demographic typically seems like. Would you like to share with the audience the story? Yeah, I'm getting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, May 30th or. No, May 1st. May 30th hasn't come yet. Right. I was like, oh, we're, we're yeah. fu- future time readers. Okay. Yeah, time travelers. Um, May 30th, Mike is at his, I, it seemed like his home where he lived with his girlfriend. He was pretty young. She was born in 98. Yeah, they have a kid together. She's a baby. Yeah. And he was born in 80. So 18 oh. year difference. Yeah. He's older oh, than me. Yeah. Wow. And he's a retired Army Special Did Operations not know Sergeant it was Major. That much of a- yeah. Age gap. Wow. Okay. Former CIA contractor, defense contractor. That's a whole other thing yeah. that we should unpack. But okay, let's just talk about the story. All of this, no, that because that that gives insight to some of this because he has put himself in a position where he is a subject matter expert, and he's selling a product to prevent what he did from happening. Mm-hmm. He's. Paraded around the podcast and news circuits. No, 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 no. I, I was, I was making a point of the huge age gap. And oh, I was, oh, oh, I was oh. Like mm, that's a whole other thing that uh, we should yeah. unpack, yeah, yeah, but yeah. we can yeah. talk about that at a later time. Yeah. But, yeah. anyways. So, well, if she's born in '98. Let's assume that she's already had a birthday. What would that? That would put her at twenty-six, right? Yeah, there's like a what eighteen-year. Yeah. Age gap between yeah. them was yeah. it was huge. So, but I'm saying like right now she's 26 and he's in his sure. mid 40s or yeah. early 40s. Yeah. Sounds about right. So, her story, or based on the police report, nobody called. It doesn't say whether or not either of them called the police. Mm-hmm. It just says that the officer responded to room 15 at something utah valley hospital emergency department something along those lines so i would assume that the hospital yeah. called yeah, because sure. it was clearly yeah. yeah it's 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 um it's what you do in domestic situations well not even in domestic situations if the doctor can't get a clear story from you and there's probably i mean the amount of force he would have had to use to break her arm by gripping it it probably left hand no it, i mean if she had flat out lied and said oh i fell down the stairs but they speculated yeah. At right. the hospital, yeah. that it was somebody harming her, they're going to call. So her side of the story was Mike didn't like the way that she verbally um, uh, disciplined their kid mm-hmm. or one of their kids. I don't know if it was their child. It was. They just said. Did the, it say an kid. age or anything? No, but the fact that she was hand bathing this child when he kicked in the We're door. We're going to assume, assume yeah. young, probably under five. Yeah. So the somehow it's not clear how it, how it diffused or what happened if he walked away or whatever. Mm-hmm. She went upstairs to the bathroom to give the kid a bath and closed the door. And Mike ended up coming up the stairs, kicked the door down, and then grabbed her wrist in the argument, broke it. Um. Mike wasn't there when the officer went to check the house. So he got in touch with Mike. Mike called him, agreed to meet him at the police station. It seemed like he said, uh, interviewed him. Mike said that um, she had a history of mental illness, all this other stuff. And that's what he put in the report. Who knows? You know, we don't have the video. We don't know every detail of what was said, mm-hmm. but this, these are the important points that the officer or the investigator, detective, whatever, mm-hmm. uh, felt were important. Um, Mike admitted to kicking down the door. Mike admitted to the kid being there. Mike admitted to grabbing her wrist. Basically, he admitted to all of it and tried to blame it away as she had she had threatened self harm. He felt that and she, didn't she threaten to also harm the child? Yeah. Well, that's what he said. Right. Yeah. That is what he supposed. Yeah. His. Okay. So, um, 
this this all transpires and as the interview is going on the officer realizing that he has enough here there's no reason to drag this out reads him his rights uh, he gets to the point of the story he talk or this this happened as he got to the point of the story about holding gripping her arm like leading up to that mike was willing to talk to the officer tell him his side of the story and then as soon as they got to the wrist thing mike said i'm not talking anymore without a lawyer present and that's when he cut off communication the officer read him his rights booked him in I believe from what I read, some of the pages were cut off and I didn't go and look back at the entire thing. The majority of the charges were, uh, the bail was either waived or no bail or something along. The way I read it initially is I thought they weren't going to allow him to bail out because, and maybe it's not this way in Utah because they are pretty conservative and gun friendly and stuff. Um, But I assumed that because of his notoriety and the fact that he does have a, a, pretty large firearms collection, stuff like that. You know, they'll, they'll typically want to take possession of that or have somebody else take, depending on your situation so that you can't get out and get a hold of them. Um, but then I saw that he had one charge that had a $5,000 bail. And during the duration, I think it said that he was in jail still for like two days. Mm-hmm. Uh, and during that time he had made phone calls. He had a, uh, uh no contact order. Temporary no contact order while he was in. Mm-hmm. So he called other friends and family and was telling them to tell her that she was going to fuck up his life and that she needed to drop the charges because this was serious. And so she did. She dropped. She did? Yeah. She dropped the charges? Yeah. But the officers listened to the audio from the calls and realized that it was because he had called and had told other people there were multiple calls, multiple conversations with multiple different people, all saying that they conveyed, like, a, basically admitting to it, yeah, we talked to her for you, this and that. So those people, I'm assuming, are probably going to get something. Oh, wow. Yeah. So um, he had, he had uh, bonded, bailed out somewhere, I guess, Thursday, Friday, something like that. And then Saturday was charged and booked back in again. For like making of, the calls yep, and coercing yep, her, essentially. Yep. yep. So it, with with a an additional felony charge, so now he's essentially facing five felony charges, two misdemeanor charges. Wow. Yeah. So. Yeah, I. Um, There's a lot to unpack there. I I'm curious. Is there truly a history of her mental health being on the decline? And is that actually documented or is he just pulling that left field? I I don't know because I don't, I would like to think that previously Mike was a good dude. I mean, mm-hmm. he was kind of. But this goes to show you never but, know what's going on in somebody's life. Yeah. And. And he has, he has dealings with, you know, him, his company, he himself his podcast and some of these other things, they have, you know, tie-ins with all kinds of other podcasts and, and books and products and projects and stuff. Like he has, he has some stuff with black rifle and black rifles podcast. And do you think everybody's going to cut him off now? They have to, they absolutely have to. There's okay. Let's, let's assume he kicks down the door, never touches her. Right. Mm-hmm. You still have the child in the room. Right. Still other issues well, there. Okay, like, no, let's go back. Let's assume that she actually said the things that he claimed. Right, and he broke it down to protect to her. To protect and the, yeah. her and the child. Problem, so problem, let's... problem number one from that. He didn't call the cops. Right. So right there, there's already an issue. You know, who knows? Maybe he thought he could de-escalate the situation. Maybe they'd been through that multiple times. Right. Don't know. Um, I actually didn't know that he was in a relationship. So he kind of keeps at least some of that part of his life away from the the mass public. It probably still makes it out in some places, but I don't typically consume a lot of his content, so I don't... Well, you're blocked now, so yeah. you can't consume anything. Yeah. Only my personal account is. Way to sound creepy, Andrew. No, because the when I was uh, on Veteran Wiki Twitter last night, mm-hmm. it was because the only people I follow are veterans on there, and mm-hmm. veteran projects and businesses and stuff. So it was popping up. And then I saw the original tweet, and that's how I found out because 
my personal accounts comment was in there still. Mm -hmm. You can't delete it. Um, and then that was the last tweet that he sent was on April 26th. He had no, like, in the one that he blocked you on. Yeah. Not a single tweet since then. So mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on, but he is very busy. He has a TV show that actually a buddy of mine, we were just talking about this, Kyle Baker. He has a TV show? Yeah. He took over as a host on a show called Surviving Man, which is ironic. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah. And uh, Kyle was uh, filmed in this most recent season. I don't know if it's released yet. I've never watched it. I only read like a snippet where it said that he replaced Randy Couture, who was a former UFC fighter, retired UFC fighter. He replaced him as the host of the show. And that's basically all i know of the show i don't know yeah. like what it, i don't know if it's like a bear grills kind of thing or if it's something else all i know is that kyle was on it. he posted about it for a while a couple months ago and i have no idea who you're talking about but okay it's because he, he moved back to indiana before you and i met okay he's the bounty hunter my buddy's about the guy that rode the moped gotcha. to the gym and blizzards and shit when okay. we both lived in indiana okay now he's a real estate agent and still a bounty hunter both yeah so he does real estate in the indianapolis area and then he still does bounty hunting and what's funny is like this is a big guy he's six five six six like two sixty two seventy but like lives in the gym mm -hmm. um and he drives or his primary vehicle that he drives is a minivan because of that job mm -hmm. because it's more inconspicuous incognito mm -hmm. Nobody thinks the bounty hunter is going to jump out of a 1997 Honda, whatever. I don't actually don't know what it is. I just know that's what the SWAT team uses here. That's well, they call them the jump out boys. But mm -hmm. it's, I mean, if you're if you don't want to paint a target on your back, that's kind of what okay. you do. Blend in, pretend to be a minivan mom. Yep. So, yeah, big issue, big issue. Again, within the veteran community. Um, I don't think, I, I think between him not calling the police after that threat, mm -hmm. him breaking the door down in front of the kid that, you know, he probably would have gotten a slap on the wrist if that was the extent of it. Maybe some misdemeanor charges, probably a protective order, whatever. I think that's where that would have ended. He could have came out and made a public probably apology. Probably an anger management class or yeah, some, yeah. some. Yeah, Something have to do to have to do public apologies, mm -hmm. run ads about it, you know, do an entire like camp like, you know, mm -hmm. hey, you know, the company's giving away all these classes because I don't want it to happen. Or probably have to refer a competing company. You wouldn't be able to do it with your own company because you wouldn't be able to make money off of. But he work. laid his hands on her. Yeah, that's yeah, the problem. Yeah, yeah. So breaking her wrist mm -hmm. is that's yeah that takes some force. Yep. So I, I think he's fucked. You said it, not me. Yep. Fieldcraft, I don't think they can survive. I don't think any of his projects can. I think if I'm, if I am correct, I believe his show is on like Discovery, a surviving man show. Do you think they're gonna sell the company and rebrand? He was he was already kind of like hands off. Mm -hmm. Um, more of like a CEO director role, and everybody else kind of ran the company. So I think he's, e either way, yeah, yeah. you're you're gonna have to completely rename the company. I don't know about rename. I think they have to. He has to be. He has to sell whatever shares. He has to you know sell his ownership stake. Mm. He can no longer be involved with like the board of operations. He can't be like they could probably keep the name. But they need to make it clear that he is out. I don't think they can keep the name. There's, there's, I genuinely don't. You have there's too much like brand recognition. There's products exactly, yeah. and there's enough people who are going to say no. But, I absolutely can't support even if he's no longer there, attached to it at all. But there are already enough people out there that don't care, that don't have the sentiment that we have. So. So you're saying the world is full of assholes. Yeah. And it's easier to says the biggest asshole. It's easier to not make the change, is what I'm saying. I don't think that they want to make the change. I understand that, but I also don't think they'll survive if they don't. But that's just my personal opinion. Yeah. So yeah. Then the fact that he was contacting people 
trying to convince her to drop. Oh, yeah, for sure. While, uh, while in, oh, no, I'm sorry. I don't think she dropped all the charges. I think she just waived the, the uh, order of protection. If I'm, that's what I read in the follow up statement. Because from... part of the order of protection is that he is not allowed to contact her. Yeah, so, yeah. so that's, that was what she waived. And then they found out that he had made phone calls and that's gotcha. why she waived it. Cause that was her right to do that. Mm -hmm. I think the police can still pursue the criminal charges no matter what, mm -hmm. but if she's not going to help and comply, they're not going to get very far with it. So now. No, the, the state will take over the city, the County, whatever the case may but be. But if she won't testify or anything like that, they'll, they'll still take over. We'll see. I'm sure this will be long and drawn out, but I think in the meantime, he's got to be off the field graft. I'm sure. And actually, I was kind of shocked that his Twitter account wasn't just taken down or restricted. Or maybe he's the only one who has access to it and therefore doesn't have access to if his he, Twitter. If he had gotten out, and I don't know, I, he, I'm assuming he's still in because it's Monday. He might have probably just talked to the magistrate this morning, maybe. Right. So there's a good chance that he hasn't even logged into Twitter. Maybe. Has absolutely no idea. Yeah. But it's I, blown up. Yeah. Um, I think he's uh, needs to shut it all down, his YouTube, all of his social media accounts. Um, stay out of the news. And don't contact her. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't think he can now for sure. Cause... Well, don't reach out to other people to yeah. contact her. Yeah. Just don't. Yep. So that... um. I guess we can talk about the the bear thing then real quick since yeah. I don't think that's in an episode that's coming out. Yeah. Um I explained to you that the what I saw going around is it originated as would you rather your daughter randomly encounter a stranger while walking through the woods or a bear? And then it evolved into would you as a woman rather encounter a stranger in the woods or a bear? And overwhelmingly, the women were saying a bear. And then dudes were getting pissed off about it. They're like, well, you just want to get mauled. Okay, I'm not coming to your defense. And they're like, this is exactly why we would choose the bear and not you because you're a piece of shit. But from my perspective, right? And I mean, but I'm a guy. I don't want to be anywhere near a fucking bear. I would much rather encounter a fucking satanic cult in the middle of the woods. Or a uh, cannibalist tribe in the middle of nowhere on some barren island in, like, Indonesia. Because they still exist, by the way. There's still tribes that, like, have never had human contact. And any time people have tried, they've just been fucking brutally murdered. And, like, their skin and bones, like, scattered across the beach shore so that people know, like, hey, don't come here. So you actually never told me how it originated. You only told me. You I only think, asked. You only asked the second part. No, I, I said no. On the show. Yeah, you, I you, you never told me how it originated. I can play back. Okay, well. absolutely, I, I do did. it. I did. Because I only remember you asking me the question, "What would you do?" We'd already me? been drinking a little bit at that point too. What would I do yeah. if? And what would you do? And I have already answered this question. Right, but that haven't. right. No, I understand that. And you agreed with me that I try to see the positive in people and give people the benefit of the doubt. Right. So to me, there's a hundred percent chance I'm dying in the hands of a bear or right. the mouth of a bear or whatever the case may be. It might just kill you just because it's fun. Right. There's only a fifty percent chance of being hurt by a man in my very general opinion so would you try and run or would you just humor him and wait until you had an opportunity to run use a phone signal for somebody or would you blindly trust that they're actually not going to do anything to you until they prove otherwise um i would try to feel out the situation and just you know i've got a pretty good gut instinct on people and i would i don't know go from there whether i'm running for my life or 
otherwise trying to fight. I don't know. I can't really say. Gotcha. Um, did you ever watch the movie or read the book The Wild or Wild? What Into the, the Wild? Are? No. Um, the movie was played by Renee Zellweger. No, not Renee Zellweger. No. no. I'm blanking on what her name was. I have no idea. Oh my God. The one, the same movie that we. So, did we end up talking about the priest and the girl in South Carolina on the show? On the crime podcast, the third one. So, it's one, it's one that's not going to air. That is correct. Okay. So, let's fill in the people that don't know about that. We're talking about on the crime podcast on the next one. We're not doing that, you said. Okay, but you had already this said in... This is crime. You had already said in the episode that aired today this is the same episode oh you mean this morning yes yeah. but that we've the also third s- episode would be the crime we've also said at the beginning of this episode that those episodes aren't viable so when people watch it they'll know it won't be a big deal we decided not to go with the segmented show nona presented some thoughts didn't think that it was appropriate, at least not at this time, or maybe not for us as a show in general. So that's not a direction that we're going to go in at this time. The way you worded it sounds really weird. But I, don't okay. remember, I don't remember your exact points, but I agreed with you. So that's all that matters at the end of the day, right? Okay. So. So. The priest in yeah, South Carolina. You did a priest? I don't know. Nika. Think, I, don't know. I don't know that priest is the right terminology for it reverend or something 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 religious something religious um pastor pastor is what he What's the is difference? i don't know i think it it, it is there a know. difference between priest pastor like this okay so if you didn't know any better and you went into like the courtroom right okay and would you call it the judge, judge, your honor? Like what? Are you the person that goes like with the most, absolutely most your formal? Your honor. Most absolutely. formal. Absolutely. Okay. Always. Because I, you hear people say judge and I'm like, that kind of feels like the. That's that's like calling somebody bro to me. Yeah. That'd be like, bro, what up? Yeah. Judge, what up? No, your honor. Yeah. Anyways. Um, so John Paul Miller. Pastor of what church? Uh, Solid Rock at Market Common Church. Um, very oddly announced the death of his future ex-wife. And I say future ex-wife in a really weird way because she had apparently filed for divorce after he had been emotionally and possibly physically abusing her. She filed for a protective order. Um, How long had this been going on for? uh, February is when she filed. Okay. And moved back to Lumberton, North Carolina. And the church and they lived together was in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. So both are only about an hour away from here. Right. And then. And the um, point that you brought up. Four was that Robeson County where Lumberton is is where yes. Michael Jordan's dad was yes. killed. So they already don't have a good track record on solving murders Which, in a timely manner. It is Robeson County Court that's handling it because that's where yes, she was found. Yes, that's where she's found. So. That's where she was living. That's where it occurred. Right. Um, it, he announced to the congregation in the last five minutes of his sermon on Sunday morning, last Sunday morning, um, that late that night, previously, like 12 hours before his sermon, he got a call saying that his wife was found with a fatal gunshot wound. Who called him? He, he doesn't say, but I'm just assuming okay. the police because they found her at... Um, a park. Yeah, a park, yeah. A, a state like a camp, a, campground. Like a state park, park I yeah. believe. Um. And he asked the congregation to not speak to each other and that he was going to tell them something very important and that as soon as he finished telling them, they all needed to get up and leave. Not to speak to each other, like to 
um, like gossip. Yeah, or not to have any conversation speculate. and not speculate and not tell others about what he was about to tell them. You, but you said this was broadcast. This was broadcast live stream for all of the congregation and anybody to tune in. So there are video clips of this. He's cracking jokes. He's laughing. He's saying how charming he is. And he lets the entire congregation know that after a long battle of her mental illness, and we all know how mentally ill she is, and it was just very difficult getting medicine to her, um, she had... To her or for her? Both. Okay. And that she had um, ended her life, which is not what the official coroner report states. So, and he ends it by saying that her funeral is already planned for this past weekend. So one week later, in just uh, mere hours, he had planned her entire funeral. How, um, how is the, like the prosecutor or whatever handle, are they handling as murder or suicide or? It hasn't been ruled. So it's, he. They have to, they have to have something to be i don't understand how it hasn't been ruled if she's already had her funeral and therefore would be released so all of this is very confusing to me but let me carry on with the with with more of my story so earlier last month april 1st it it was posted on the are we dating the same guy myrtle beach horry county florence county john paul or goes by jp who is the pastor, and his picture was posted by somebody anonymously asking if other people were dating him. And um, then it gets even more interesting. Pastor John Paul alleged girlfriend Susie Skinner has been seen in public with him on multiple occasions, Susie's former husband, who was wheelchair-bound, died on Labor Day 2021 by falling into a pool and drowning. So I'm starting to speculate at this point. It's like strangers on a train. And he, Pastor Paul, and Mika met when she was 14 as his parishioner. Mm -hmm. And he had been grooming her since then as he was married with five children and groomed her for several years finally in 2017 he left his wife for her they got married and then my speculation is that since at least 2021 he's been with this other girl and they have been so according to the news as recently as an hour ago yeah he had tracking devices. He was stalking yes, her. Yes. So that um, that was they, all they part have, of her report. They have ruled it suicide, though. Oh. Her family is skeptical, mm-hmm. but they have ruled it suicide. So there are, have been several people coming forward saying that she was making plans with them, that that was not something somebody who wanted to end their life would do, that she was... She was looking for employment. She was, you know, looking to move on with her life, making plans with people in the Lumberton area to, you know, start start fresh, essentially. There's not much to do in that. For people that don't know North Carolina. Okay, that I I give her that. I'm assuming that she's got family or something there that she's with. Explaining to them though that Lumberton is the backwoods, potentially no stoplights. Barely even a stop sign. Whatever neighboring town is near you, yeah. Where the trailer parks are no, and absolutely. Stuff like that. So it's not a place that you go to find a good job. But if you're suicidal, yeah. you're not making plans with people. Right. Well, no. It depends. You are shutting yourself off it, from it, the it, world, it and there, there are people who don't want you to get suspicious to it because they do. It's, it's like the difference between the direction that you cut your wrists. Are you doing it for attention? And hoping that somebody catches on and gets you help, mm-hmm. or are you doing it because you're actually going to do it? And that is the, so I had to go through, uh, it's called assist, which 
assist is uh, applied suicide intervention skills training. And the majority of the training, you know, is it's not just talking people off the ledge. It's being direct. You don't say, hey, are you going to harm yourself? No, you are you planning on killing yourself? Make them think. If they say yes, what's your plan? What are you going to do? Are you going to do it right now? Be absolutely direct. Do not let it be ambiguous. Yes or no questions. And you have a higher likelihood of helping them understand that you can get help. So some people just like you have the people who will give away everything first, right? You have people that will write a letter. Then you, But you also have people who want you to think that everything is okay so that they can do what they want to do leading up to the event. So without knowing her or anything about her, I can't speculate either way. It doesn't, it, it definitely, you, how long you said they were separated for almost three years? No. I just saw February. So No, no, no. I never said she was separated for three years. Oh, no, I, I said she filed for divorce in February. You said something about 2021. I thought that was part of that. His girlfriend's, husband who was wheelchair bound drowned that's not yes. coincidental no absolutely not what did uh what did we just watch where uh the guy did that to like a family member of like his girlfriend or wife or whatever remember he like he like had like touched her or something like that and the guy went and found him out like in his shack out in the woods and he was in a wheelchair and he like kicked him into the river so the gators could eat him I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. But there are um, protests going on outside of Solid Rock Church in Mer in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina right now because of this case. All of this has happened in the last week and a half, barely. Um, she died last Saturday. Her funeral was just a couple of days ago. All of this has happened and blown up online that everybody is following the multiple videos that she posted on her Facebook page accusing her now I, I I don't you can't even say ex-husband because she's dead um her husband unfortunately is what she he still is well, maybe the widower right whatever John Paul um she accused him of drugging her abusing her um and just everybody is saying that she was not suicidal at all, that this is completely left field and doesn't make any sense. I'd be interested to see if we can find the police reports and read them, see what, see what the police this say. This for sure it. will be like the next dateline. Maybe. Oh, Do people for still sure. watch that? I don't know. I don't know either. And snapped, remember? In a couple episodes ago, I mentioned that that was my show and I had to cut oh. myself off. This is exactly what occurs. The way that he was talking reminds me of Chris Watts from Colorado, where he killed his whole family. And he stood there and begged the police and the whole world to find his wife and children. Only he was the one who had killed him. The way that he did this sermon, you would laughing and joking. <laughs> She just died, so it's okay though. I mean, people do weird things when they're no, nervous. No, it's it's yeah. no. When I'm saying he's like he's guilty, right? But when you when you want everything to appear normal, mm -hmm. and you're nervous, whether or not you are truly guilty or not, because the fact that he's even still a fucking pastor after cheating on his wife and children for this poor girl and how yeah, the church gets away with whatever they want how so it, because the church gets away with whatever they want and then i saw something about his dad is a possible pedophile and like the whole the whole church is seriously fucked like it, there needs to be a major investigation maybe they're like uh that cult westboro baptist church remind me they're out of florida they're like basically the church equivalent of the kkk what yeah 
they always go to like these rallies. They're like extremely anti-abortion. Oh um, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. I, it's been a while since I've even yeah. thought about them. Yeah. Anyways, they're uh, they're all. You said they're out of Florida. I believe I. I'm almost 100 percent positive Westboro Baptist Church is in Florida. Yes. Spot on for Florida. Needs to be uh, like one of those uh, like backwood swamp buildings, like in uh, True Blood. Oh, I thought you were gonna say like um, from uh, Righteous Gemstones when the guy has like the whole compound and everything. Well, that's basically what those other two that do with the eyes, and then what's his name, Joel Austin. The what? What eyes? What are you talking about? There's some like I don't old, know anybody in the church. There's I don't I only know these people because of the stupid shit that they do and say and the memes of them. There's uh, I don't know any of the most famous pastors in the U.S. Joel where it came up. I don't think this is him in the U.S. with crazy eyes, craft eyes. Yeah, because he's like, he's got that, he's got one of those faces, one of those faces. This guy, mega church pastor is dangerous, but obviously this is what? some clickbait YouTube video, but this pastor is insane. I literally have no idea. Kenneth this... Copeland is his name. I've never even heard that name. You've never seen uh -uh. pictures of this guy? No, that's actually... but that looks like a wax figure. That's, that's it doesn't one... even look real. That's one of the more like... um neutral that's like the most normal facial expression yeah that looks like seen. a wax figure but no i oh my god that looks like homelander go back to the other page right that's there what, that is homelander <laughs> so they're just comparing him to... <laughs> it's from running it says i knew his crazy blue eyes reminded me of someone oh my gosh yeah look at this guy's facial expressions is he shitting his pants what's happening but they're Speaking of, did you see that picture of Joe Biden? Yeah, I'd seen that a long <laughs> ago. Yeah. Every parent knows what he was doing. Yep, yep. What do they call it? Turtle? Turtle walk? I've, I've never heard turtle walk. No, he literally looked like he stood there and shit in his diaper. That's every mom of any, like, 15-month-old who are like, do you need to go potty? No. Do you remember the joke from uh, Deadpool? <laughs> where he's talking about the color of pants that people were wearing. Mm -mm, and he's no. like, he's like, he's talking about how he's wearing red pants because he knew he was going to be bleeding. He's like, and that's why he's wearing brown pants because the guy shit himself in the gunfight. <laughs> Don't remember that at all. So maybe Biden just needs to wear brown pants all the time. Dark brown pants. Okay. That way we'll never know. Or let's just, you know not deal with that yeah but i mean unless the vice president and congress does something there's nothing any of us can do until november 5th or whenever it is right that's what i'm saying just yeah. vote them out yep. so um we're 45 minutes in do we have any other crimes or criminals to talk about mm. before we conclude this episode of crime no i think that was it no? okay. that was that was the only crime that i had i told cash that we're going to take the fcs sticker off my truck when they get out of school that would be a good thing to do probably don't support field craft survival i'd be, actually man i wish i still had access to uh their big commerce store i'd like to see that analytics like the trends on their sales. They were doing bad like a year and a half ago. They actually did really bad around uh, Black Friday 2022. They did like their worst ever holiday. Um, and then like they, they had stopped running ads too. And we kept recommending, hey, you need to do this. And Mike had made a couple posts on his social media accounts talking about the sales. And every time he did, they would have like an immediate spike. And then just like it fell right back off. Like you need the consistency of running the ads because the algorithm 
after somebody has seen your post, it's probably going to get buried. They'll see it one time. They'll be like, oh, I'll, I'll come back to it. And they never do. And it's just an afterthought. And social media these days is 100% pay to play. If you're not running ads, you're not doing anything. It's almost impossible to become organically viral unless you do something to go out of your way to piss off a group of people so that they promote you by trying to cancel you. Do you think this might actually happen? No. Domestic violence stuff, I don't think there's... Even if, even if everything else is either dropped or plucked on the rug or whatever... Again, he still he, he still broke her. her arm. Yeah, so it's mm -hmm. right then and there. The rest of the story doesn't really matter. Agreed. The, I actually said to somebody, I said the only way that it could be in any way, shape, or form justified, and none of this was in the police report, so I'm, it's not going to come out later, because then they're going to be like, "Why didn't you say that? Why didn't you call the police? Why didn't you do this?" And just make himself look more guilty. The only way that that can be justified in that moment is if she was actively hitting, choking, stabbing, or shooting that child, or drowning. That's the only way that I can see that he gets away with breaking her wrist. If he was actually legitimately doing right. it to get her to off save, the child. To yeah. save the child. Yeah. But that outside of that, there's... And the child is likely too young to give an actual statement. Yeah. If she's watching him, then yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Or they're more creepy. What are you implying? That the kid was too old to be receiving baths from his mom. Oh, that never even crossed my mind. No, I'm going to go under the assumption too yeah. young to make a, a statement. So since there's no way that this episode will ever be monetized when it when our channel becomes monetizable, please visit our website <laughs> and uh, get yourself... And donate to Veteran Wiki. Yep. Get yourself a shout out on, the, on a future episode. Uh, link for that is down in the description as well. And I'll see you later. Or I'll be back. Is that creepy call screen that I had yesterday? Don't be creepy. Yeah. You're going to scare all of our seven No, was somebody away. saying that to me. They were saying, I'll be back. Like, yeah. okay, back where? Who are you? Calling me from an unknown number. Mm -hmm. So It was Mike. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was Mike. He yeah. was calling you from jail. Yeah. That'd be fucking weird, but I don't think it'd be an unknown number. I think it'd be... I it think, would be a collect number. Yeah. And he wouldn't call me. <laughs> Why would he call? He could call literally anybody else. He can call Evan, Nick. They probably don't want to talk to him, but... I would hope not. Yeah. That's it. Um, right. Love you. I love you too. See you next time. Bye, people. Goodbye.